I'm Pete Lockett. Welcome to this uh, first instalment of uh, the Beginner's Toolbox for, for Cajon. Um, now, this is a whole new series and what I'm hoping to, um, to be able to present um, is the, the very beginning elements of numerous uh, percussion instruments that you could bring into your uh, rhythmic world. So this is not just for percussionists, but also for uh, drum set players who might want to add a little bit of percussion uh, into their arsenal of sounds and their, uh, you know, what they can offer in the studio uh, and live um, with different bands. Now, what I would say is that the more you can offer in a, in a situation when you're working with someone, particularly in the beginning, you're working with a new singer-songwriter or you're working with someone for the first time. If you can go in and you can you have a little bit of programming as well as your drum set playing and you have a little bit of percussions and basic stuff, um, you know, it's going to put you in a more advantageous position to be able to secure more work with that artist and be recommended uh, word of mouth with other artists and stuff like that. So to be able to get a, a foothold in the world of percussion, we've got this uh, series here in rhythm, it's kind of like a beginner's toolbox um, for uh, various percussion instruments. Um, we're starting out with uh, with the cajon, which uh, is this beautiful uh, instrument that I'm that I'm sitting on here. It's an instrument with an amazing uh, amazing uh, history and and heritage and tradition and techniques and so much uh, in the instrument and the music um, where you find the cajon uh, played. Now traditionally. Uh, it was uh, an instrument that that kind of grew out of um, the 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 fact that the uh, in the during the times of the uh, horrendous slave trade, the the slaves weren't uh, permitted to have drums and <clears throat> and use drums, and so they would play on whatever their their drive and their desire and their their love and the spirit of music was so strong for them that they had to play music on, on whatever, music and rhythm on whatever they could find and whatever they could make. And in this instance, they used uh, kind of tea chests or whatever they could find. And that's the origins of the instrument, which was uh, in Peru at that time. So one of the main traditions that you find for the cajon is Peruvian uh, traditional music. And then in the latter part uh, of the 1900s, um, it became very commonplace in, in flamenco music. Um, it, there's, it's rumoured that uh, Paco de la Gia was on tour in Peru and the, in the flight the, uh, the gear had gone missing, the percussionist gear, and they didn't know what to, you know, at the time he would play congas and stuff, you know, stuff that you would normally hear in, in scenarios before that, that period. Um, and they was like, well, what are we going to play? And then they managed to get a, a, Peruvian, a Peruvian cajon and it worked brilliantly in the music, and uh, and from that point on, it became a mainstay in in flamenco music from Spain. So they're the kind of the two main traditions. Now, probably from late nineteen nineties, early to late nineteen nineties, um, there was a boom with the cajon. Numerous uh, percussion uh, uh, manufacturers started making cajons, and. Cajon became a very popular instrument within the Western world. Um, now, it's still very popular today. Loads and loads of different companies make cajons. This is a great LP uh, cajon with a with a Havana uh, Havana uh, kind of finish to it. Great, great instrument. But there are many, many uh, instruments to choose from um, with the cajon. So it's a very popular instrument. And once it's abstracted out of traditional Peruvian or traditional, uh, you know, Spanish flamenco, then there's a whole lot of opportunities uh, that you can explore different techniques with this instrument. Now, for me, it's a, a mainstay in a lot of my percussion sessions because it's so versatile and it and it kind of lends itself to so many different um, rhythmic approaches be it indian with the split hand technique um, or you know cuban with the heel tip and you know many many different uh, uh, approaches and techniques from the percussion world are available but also because of the simplistic nature of the of the instrument it's very easy to voice uh, in rhythms and and uh, grooves that you might find on the drum set such as instruments, uh, uh, you know, played between the hi hat, bass drum, and snare drum. So this concept of hi hat, bass drum, and and snare drum is something that I bring into the the, the education um, with this instrument uh, in in particular because what it does is opens up many doorways um, for drum set players to be able to access their drum set vocabulary on 
on this instrument. So it's a great doorway into the world of percussion, and that's why we've kind of chosen it um, as the as the first instrument that we're going to look at in in this uh, in this series. Um, now the instrument has has uh, has three main sounds, um, and we can equate those or compare them in a way to to the drum set, bass drum, hi hat, and and snare drum. So we have the bass tone. We have the uh, what we would call the sh what the Spanish would call the sharp tone. Some people might call it the slap, the slap uh, stroke. Bass. Slap, and then we have um, you know the touch tone. So that would kind of be the hi hat. So bass tone would be obviously the bass drum. Sh uh, the sharp tone or slap stroke would be the snare drum, and then the touch tone. Kind of with the tip of the fingers. We're going to talk about the strokes in a minute, but I'm just explaining the strokes um, that we're going to look at. We've got the so with the three. You can kind of access your drum set vocabulary um, up to a point, um, you know, and start to get some ideas happening. Now, I would just like to point out that this is um, the beginning of of a doorway into the instrument. If you wanted to look at the tradition of the instrument, Spanish tradition or Peruvian tradition, then it's a massive, massive study. Uh, the, the, the vocabulary and the depth of material uh, is, is, is huge. Um, we're not really going to be looking so much at that in this series. It's really the, the first step toolbox, if you like, basic tones, and uh, to be able to play a, a couple of uh, grooves. So it's not a traditional study, but hopefully it's something that can get you uh, started uh, on the instrument. So let's start to look at some of the tones. First of all, the bass tone. Now this is played with the uh, kind of with uh, the center of the palm kind of on the drum. And when it strikes, the fingers kind of come off a little bit. What's very important is how far your hand comes into the drum. OK, so each cajon, each specific individual cajon will have a bass tone that will sing in a different place um, than other cajons. So you might be used to having a cajon where the bass drum, uh, where the bass tone will sing out here. Other drums, it might be further down. So with each drum, you need to find the sweet spot uh, and, you know, take, take it from there. So with this one, the, su the sweet spot is kind of this far in. Now, if I start further out, you'll hear that there's no... Uh, there's no bass tone at all. So I'll start further out and I'll move further in, then you'll hear the sweet spot, then I'll go past it, and so then you'll, you'll hear it disappear. So you can see how the tone changes as you move your hand in the drum. So it's a matter of finding that sweet spot where you get that rich uh, uh, bass, bass tone. Um, so the next up is the is the uh, the touch tone. Now this is a very subtle tone. Some people kind of play this um, a, a little bit too um, prominently. Um, the Spanish traditional players tend to play it with the uh, or a lot of them anyway tend to play it with the outer three fingers and just where your hand is naturally hanging over the corner of the drum. So you see it's a very subtle uh, sound, you're, you're kind of a touch stroke, basically. Um, we're going to look at the slap stroke in a minute, but let's look at a few combinations, uh, first of all, just with these two strokes. So example one, uh, we're just going to look at 16th notes with the touch stroke. Two, three, four, and right, left, 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 right, left. So, although this seems a very simple uh, and basic exercise, it's really important to focus on it and get those strokes even between the two hands. So, you don't want it to sound like this, for example with one louder than the other. It's got to be very smooth and even. Uh, 
And notice that you kind of hear that subtle kind of snare tone um, with the with the instrument. Now, traditionally with the old tea chests, it would have been that the front head, the front of the tea chest, would have just been slightly unscrewed, so you get that kind of rattling sound. Um, some cajons you still have that uh, today. Um, more often than not, you'll have some sort of snare mechanism of strings. Um, stretched across the inside of the of the front head, so that's where the the snare drum kind of buzz is is coming from. Next up, we're going to look at the bass tone. Now we're going to play it with both hands to begin with. In a lot of the work, a majority of the bass tones are played with the right hand, uh, and it's sometimes a little bit. Uh, harder in the beginning to get a good bass tone um, with the left hand but after some time you know it does become you know you, you, you get it together and so remember that it's just this area of the palm and we want both hands and again we're going to do the 16th notes 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So it's unusual that you'd ever hear that within the context of um, a musical uh, phrase, but it's important to try and work on that and uh, and kind of get it within um, the context of being smooth and even, and with the left hand playing that playing that tone uh, evenly. So now let's start to combine some of those tones together. Um, we're just going to start with one bass tone. This is example three. We're going to start with one bass tone um, with, the, with the right hand and then three touch tones. So we'll have... One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a... So you've got to move smoothly from here to here. So what you can do is strip that out as a movement and you can just have what the right hand would be playing, which is the next example we're going to start to look at the slap stroke. Now, the slap stroke, or the, the sharp tone, um, is, is very similar to how you would have the slap stroke played on congas or bongos or, or other instruments. And the best way to describe it is as though it's a bouncing ball. So if you imagine you've got a tennis ball and you're bouncing it and you, and you catch it and grab it. So if you take that motion then onto the instrument, kind of got this grabbing motion. So it's the fingertips that strike. So if we compare that to the to the touch tone. There's the touch tone. Here how much more prominent um, that that stroke is. So now let's look at uh, a combination with the slap stroke or the sharp tone and the touch tones. Again, we'll just have one sharp tone and three touch tones. Sharp, touch, touch, touch. E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh, Now let's look at a combination that involves the bass tone, the sharp tone, and 
the touch tones in a similar way than you might find um, a 16th note uh, regular groove um, on, on drum set with the bass tone on one and three and the uh, sharp tone, slap tone or snare drum in our kind of analogy on, uh, on two and four. This is example five. All right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Notice how subtle the touch tones are and how much the other tones pop out. Now let's change it up a bit. Example six, we just add one extra bass tone. E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a right left 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 Finally in example seven we're just going to reverse that around. So we'll put the two bass tones on the first two eighth notes of the 2-4 bar. E and a 2, E and a 3, E and a 4, E and a right, left, 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 right, left. So hopefully this is enough to get us started with the instrument. There's a, a massive amount of, of study if you want to go on and, and uh, you know look at the traditional rhythms and how the traditional techniques work. Uh, next time we're going to look at a few other variations along this line. But I hope you enjoyed uh, this instalment and uh, see you next time for more.